They were the greatest musical duo ever, but a toxic feud shredded their legendary bond. This is the untold story of two friends whose songs define generations, yet they turned viciously against each other. How a mysterious message reunited these warring rock legends and healed their relationship beyond the grave? Prepare for an emotional roller coaster that's as powerful as their most iconic guitar solos. You might just need a moment and a tissue after this one. John and Paul. Their names are etched in history. Back in 1957, two teens met by pure chance, and music was changed forever. 15-year-old Paul blew John's mind jamming 20 flight rock on guitar. John was 16, but knew his energetic kid was special. A lightning in a bottle friendship would be born, and together they would soon shake the world. By the mid-1960s, Beatle mania was in overdrive. Their hits screamed up the charts as teens would shriek for John and Paul. They'd gone from two regular kids in Liverpool to the red-hot center of the biggest band ever. But darkness loomed ahead. Jealousy invaded their bond. John resented Paul taking control. Creative differences mushroomed. Trust disintegrated. The Beatles are breaking up. The band imploded in 1970 amidst public insults and lawsuits. Vicious lyrics expose the hatred, festering between former friends, and falling out with a friend can sting, right? But have you ever written a savage song or a Facebook rant when you're mad? We've all been there. In 1971, John unloads on Paul in How Do You Sleep? Brutal lyrics like, Those freaks was right when they said you was dead, and The only thing you done was yesterday, explode from John's pain. Paul admits it hurt, but John found twisted solace attacking his estranged friend in song. Paul would be crushed. His musical soulmate now seemed like a hostile rival. But privately, John also grieved the loss of the brotherhood, and for 10 long years, the creative magic would stay blocked. Could these warring partners ever find peace? Their rift was agony since they were just like brothers. Under the fury, deep love still flowed. Creative minds would clash as Paul, the perfectionist, clashed with John, the rebel. Jealousy and mistrust would poison their bond. As solo stars, they barely saw each other for a decade. And when they did, tension would crackle in the air. The first encounter occurred in April of 1974 at John Lennon's home in Los Angeles during an intense jam session with friends. And you know the score. You meet up with an old friend, but they've changed. And now it's like hanging out with a stranger. This is what happened to McCartney and Lennon, who were no longer just rock stars with zero responsibilities. Remember when you first started school or that new job, and it seemed all shiny, new, and exciting? But as time went on, and then the shine started to wear off, the complexities of new responsibilities, managing friendships, and changing dynamics would take over. It's the same thing for rock stars like Lennon and McCartney, who went from excited musicians to business partners, decision makers, media figures, and icons, all while trying to handle their personal lives, and all under the watchful eye and scrutiny of the public. The second encounter took place in 1976 at the Dakota Building in New York City. This time, however, nostalgia combined with regret tinged in the atmosphere. Fame brought huge changes to their brotherly bond. No longer only musicians, now they were business partners and under constant scrutiny. But glimmers of their old friendship would still peek through. An unforgettable moment unfolded at Saturday Night Live. Imagine this, Lorne Michaels offers the Beatles $3,000 cash to appear on Saturday Night Live. By sheer coincidence, John and Paul just so happened to be watching together at that very moment. Should they take the cab to the studio and claim it? The allure of performing together tugs at their heartstrings. But exhaustion wins out. And still, this near reunion sparks something. Their old rapport flickers to life once more. Lennon would go on record in an interview from 1980 saying, Paul and I were together watching that show. He was visiting us at our place in the Dakota. We were watching it and almost went down to the studio just as a gag. We nearly got into a cab, but we were actually too tired. 
he and Linda that walked in, and he and I were just sitting there watching the show, and we went, ha ha, wouldn't it be funny if we went down, but in the end, we didn't. You might be wondering where the song comes into play in this narrative. Well, you'll have to stick around to see. But at that moment, we missed a great performance. Two legends chose sleep over a historic reunion. Can you even believe it? It seems this is something that happens to everyone, even superstars. Tell us your thoughts about this below. Are you as disappointed as us that this never happened? Had Lennon and McCartney made it to the studio that night, then what impact do you think it would have had on both the music world and their friendship? So that night didn't include any impromptu appearance from two-fourths of the Beatles, but it did hold huge significance that would impact McCartney a few years later. John Lennon said farewell to Paul McCartney with the words, Think about me every now and then, my old friend. The pair met one more time the following day, where, in regards to McCartney showing up unexpectedly, Lennon told him, Please call before you come over. It's not 1956, and turning up at the door isn't the same anymore. You know, just give me a ring. Paul would be hurt, but John was setting boundaries like any good relationship needs, and there was the added pressure of his superstar status. Though bruised, their extraordinary bond would endure, and McCartney etched John's words into his heart. Imagine being stonewalled by someone you consider to be your best friend. Tell me below if John was right to ask for a heads up, or how you think it could have played out differently. This awkward moment would reveal how vastly their lives had changed, yet John's plea showed their brotherly bond still pulsed underneath it all. Yes, they struggled to understand each other now, but their visionary creative flair and unbreakable bond persisted. Musical soulmates linked on a cosmic level. And at the same time, just two guys who met at a church fair over sandwiches and a guitar. When egos didn't get in the way, that friendship sparked back to life. Even when they fought bitterly, glimmers of friendship shone through. Just months before John's murder, he and Paul had a heartwarming conversation about baking bread, something that Paul McCartney talked about on The Howard Stern Show. And I was baking bread and got quite good at it, you know. So when I heard John was doing it, it was great. We could just talk about something so ordinary. After years of tension, finally a real conversation about their humble new hobby, not business or fame. Paul said, And it was, it was really nice. And I was so glad that, that we got back to that relationship that we'd always had, you know, when we were kids. Can you even imagine it? Two rock gods bonding over baking recipes. So comically simple, but also so powerful that they could connect as two old friends who shared a new interest. When egos and empires didn't get in the way, that boyhood bond sparked back to life. Music had brought them together, and deep down, it still connected them. But what do you think? Did Paul and John rediscover their friendship before it was tragically cut short? Hit us up with your opinions down below. You're also probably wondering, where does the song fit into this story? Well, we're about to dive into that. But first, we'll take a moment to remember the heartbreaking events that unfolded on December the 8th of 1980, when tragedy struck the musical world. John Lennon, the creative genius and courageous voice, is assassinated and silenced. The world plunges into mourning. Paul's public reaction seems cold. And when asked about his feelings, he simply says, a Drag, isn't it? OK, okay cheers. Hey, Bye. But privately, Paul is utterly destroyed. Coping with losing his dear friend in this violent manner is just too much to bear. In a later interview, Paul would admit, the pain is beyond words. You can never describe it. At home, Paul watches the news unfold on television, surrounded by his family. Silent grief sets in. But incredibly, it seems John has one final message to deliver, even from beyond the grave. Paul struggles to process their last meeting ending on a sour note, but little does he know that John has found a way to reach out one last time. The twist that will bring you to tears is coming up. In 1981, a few months after Lennon's death, McCartney invited Carl Perkins to collaborate on Get It, a song from his tribute album, Tug of War. Perkins showed McCartney a new song he had been working on called My Old Friend. Perkins told McCartney 
he'd come up with the lyrics in the middle of the night while staying over at their home. He presented it to him to say thanks for their collaboration. He recalled the lyrics just poured out of him overnight, no need for pen or paper, and when Paul heard it, he stormed out in tears. Carl had channeled John's spirit without realizing it. John's final words to Paul before his untimely demise were, think about me every now and then, old friend. The same plea would be in Carl's song, won't you think about me every now and then, my old friend. It gives you the chills. Was John guiding Carl's hand from beyond? That verse never fails to give me goosebumps, and it seems like John was sending a message through Carl's music. Paul was shaken by the eerie power of it, this song reopening his grief, but in a healing way. And what do you think? Did John reach out to Paul and mend their bond through this haunting tune? Share your theories about it down below. At first, Paul's reaction would worry Carl, but Linda explained this song helped Paul to connect with his grief for John. Carl had channeled John's spirit without even realizing it. The lyrics unearthing emotions that Paul had long buried. But the supernatural connections do not end there. In 1996, the three remaining Beatles would reunite to record a song featuring John's vocals. As they snap the photo, a white peacock mysteriously struts into the shot. John loved wearing white suits, and the band took it as a cosmic sign that John's spirit was still with them. In 1993, Paul would record My Old Friend with Carl, a tune forever linking Paul to John's memory. The white peacock moment will give you heartwarming chills. John had clearly found a way to reach out, even from beyond the grave. Do you believe that John sent messages to guide Paul's healing, or was it just coincidence? Share your spooky thoughts down below. John and Paul's relationship reminds everyone that even the closest of friends can lose their way, but real friendship waits silently to be revived. Those magical early days in Liverpool had never disappeared, and though fame had complicated their bond, music had imprinted an unbreakable connection. In the end, John and Paul's extraordinary talents sprang from a remarkably ordinary friendship. Two kids just jamming excitedly in a garage, dreaming of what could be. Before the pressures of stardom and expectations had made everything into gold, and then just gold dust. That innocence endured underground even when the surface would be scorched by resentment, and all too often we can abandon each other over wounds that time could mend. Their talents and passion for music had made them icons who defined generations. And it's safe to say that without the Beatles' influence, modern culture would be far more dull. Their songs inspired generations who followed, Oasis, The Verve, Radiohead, and many others that we'll get in other videos. Let us know which ones you want to see. The most likes will likely be made. Their catalog is woven into the soundtrack of our lives, Though fame complicated their bond, music brought them together, and it made them legends. Their simple friendship had paved the way for so many collaborations, and despite everything, beneath McCartney and Lennon's incredible careers were just two dear old friends who liked to bake bread. How have John, Paul, George, and Ringo shaped your life? Share your Beatles stories below.